Hello everyone, my name is Jisun Lee from the Department of Plant Science and Technology at Chungang University. Thanks for the opportunity for today's presentation. Today, I'm going to talk about the impact of seed nanopriming on watermelon seedlings. I participated in this research project when I was pursuing my PhD degree at Texas A&M University, aside from my dissertation topic. And I would like to share some part of the result today. Here with the table of contents for today's presentation. There will be mainly four parts, including introduction, method and materials, research and discussion, and conclusion. I'm going to start with the introduction section by highlighting the importance of seeds in agriculture fields, especially in the aspect of biological and economic importance. In the case of biological side, usually seed contains high protein, starch, and oils, which are helpful for the early stage of growth and development for plants. As an economic aspect, seeds are also considered as a good food source for a large populations in the world. There are mainly three types as a food itself. First, cereals such as rice, barley, wheat, and maize. And second group is the legumes, usually covered by pot such as soybean, peanut, and or fresh bean and fresh pea. In the case of persis, it is a sort of legume family, but it is distinguished due to lower fats and higher protein and fiber content. These are the main reasons why seeds are important. Seed germination is defined as the physiological process that begins with the water uptake by the dried seed, which is also called imbibition to active metabolic processes and ends with the emergence of the radical from its surrounding tissues. To improve or enhance seed invigoration, various types of seed technology has been applied as a post-harvest treatment. In general, the purpose of seed technology is to improve germination and seedling growth to help supply seeds and other materials needed for sowing. 
There are mainly three types of seed technology in widespread use, such as priming, seed priming, thermal treatment, and seed coating to improve seed invigoration. Amongst them, today I would like to focus on seed priming method as a seed enhancement technology. So, seed priming is a pre-sowing technique in which seeds are moderately hydrated to the point where pre-germination metabolic processes begin without actual germination. After hydration, seeds are then re-dried to near the actual weight for normal handling. There are many types of benefit have been reported from seed priming effect, including increased germination rate, obtained biotic and abiotic stress resistance, and higher yield and quality. These pictures show that the synchronized germination from primed seeds, whereas unprimed seeds show low germination rate at this time point. Consequently, the lower germination can lead the lower productivity eventually. This graph shows the seed hydration curve and germination phase in unprimed. There and aren't any home services capsules available. This graph shows that the seed hydration curve and germinating phase in unprimed and primed seeds. X axis indicates the water contents and y-axis indicates time and the straight line for the case of unprimed seeds whereas the dotted line represents the prime seed case. As you can see from the graph, the germinating phase can be divided into three phases, such as seed imbibition, metabolism activation, and growth cell elongations. Especially at the second phase, various types of metabolism, such as energy, or regulation of oxidative status, DNA repair, cell cycle activation, reserve mobilization, and modification of hormonal status are stimulated simultaneously. After the completion of the second phase, unprimed seeds are continued to initiate the cell elongation. However, in the case of primed seeds can be dehydrated and stored until sowing and final germination. In general, 
There are five types of seed priming methods. Hydro priming by soaking of seed in water prior to sowing. Hollow priming by priming with salt to decrease cell line intolerance under salt stress conditions. Osmotic priming by soaking of seeds in solutions containing chemicals to allow gradual seed imbibition and activation. Solid matrix priming by mixing with a solid material and certain amount of water. And last one is bio priming by priming with living bacterial inoculum to in increase speed and uniformity of germination. So far, I have been talking about the, the importance of seeds and seeds priming technique in general. Nowadays, nanotechnology is applied to various fields and agriculture is not an exception. The infusion of nanotechnology concepts and its principles in agricultural sciences has been attempted to develop and improve many processes. So why nanotechnology gains attention in agriculture? First of all, the estimated world population will reach 9 billion in 2050. Consequently, crop production needs to expand up to 60% by 2050 to assure food security. However, the existing techniques such as plant breeding and genetic engineering are laborious and expensive or sometimes not well accepted by consumers. In this sense, nanotechnology can be one of the alternative techniques to improve crop quality. Thus far, various types of applications of nanotechnology have been reported in agricultural fields, including delivery of fertilizer, nanosensor, nanofungicides, nanoherbicides, insect pest management, and micronutrient supply, etc. The seed nano priming, which is a technique of seed priming with synthetic nanoparticles, has been found to be effective strategy to mount desired physiological response in plants. And its importance in crop improvement due to small size and unique physical chemical characteristics of nanomaterials Germination after nanopriming affects the production of reactive oxygen species 
phytohormone crosstalk and plant disease tolerance. There are, however, two limitations regarding nanopriming methods. First, efficacy and toxicity depend on chemical composition, size, and its concentrations. Second, the outcomes of nanopriming treatments may vary from plant to plant. Based on this introductory information, we have objectives by green synthesis and characterization of nanoparticles using essential metals such as iron and ident to identify chemical compositions. Also test their priming efficacy in seed germination and then ultimately to develop concentration specific physiological markers. So finally, here we our hypothesis. Nanopriming of essential metal can induce or modulate metabolic changes and elicit protective mechanisms to maintain watermelon plant health, improving crop quality and yield. In the following slides, materials and methods will be presented. As plant material, two watermelon varieties were selected for this experiment. First one is Riverside variety, which is big, over shaped, and sweet with a crunchy bite. And this is a seeded dichloid. And second, Variety is Maxima, which is a large, round, sweet, and seedless as a triploid and the high content of lycopene. They were procured from Origin Seeds Company to test the effect of seed priming with the green synthesized nanoparticles on watermelon seed germination and seedling development. For this experiment, the essential micronutrient such as iron was tested. In plants, iron is required for photosynthesis and chlorophyll synthesis. Also, it is serving as a cofactor for enzymes such as cytochrome P450, etc. When plants undergo deficiency of this element, intervenar chlorosis and yellow leaf can be observed. In addition, previous studies demonstrated that iron nanoparticles treatment exerted less damage to citrus maxima plant than iron type treatment. Furthermore, various nano sized and shape of iron nanoparticles have been green synthesized by using plant extract as a reducing agent.
After preparation of iron nanoparticles by using waste onion bulb, the lipophilized and dried powder was used for structural and morphological characterizations as synthesized nanoparticles using XRD, XPS, and TEM techniques. The results were comparable with the published data and it is characterized as ferric oxide with spherical and average size as 23 nanometers. In plants, exposure of various metallic nanoparticles are found to modulate reactive oxygen species productions. The ROS are the root cause of altering enzymatic and non-enzymatic antioxidant defenses of plants. Therefore, we used DPPH, ABTS, and PPR leaf disc assay to investigate the influence of different iron nanoparticles priming treatments on the nano uh, on, on the non-enzymatic antioxidant defense of watermelon seed plants. In this study, we estimated non-enzymatic antioxidant level and chlorophylls in the leaf tissue of 8-day watermelon seedlings to understand the potential toxicity of seed priming with iron nanoparticles in comparison with its bulk counterpart such as FECS3 and FE203 at concentration um, 50, 100, and 100 ppm respectively. Results showed that seed priming with iron nanoparticles and its bulk counterpart, FECS3, FE203, had an almost similar impact on non enzymatic antioxidant properties of diploid and triploid watermelon seedlings. However, seed priming with 100 and or 150 of FECS3 and FE203 solutions significantly decreased chlorophyll's content in both diploid and triploid watermelon varieties. Interestingly, all studied iron nanoparticle priming treatments had no considerable impact on chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B contents of diploid and triploid watermelon seedlings compared with their respective unpriming and hydropriming control. Taken together, these results indicate that biosynthesized iron nanoparticles were non-phytotoxic compared to bulk counterpart such as FECS3 and FE203. Uh, FE Ten imaging of iron nanoparticles primed 
diploid watermelon seedling clearly indicated that nanoparticles were observed in the seed coat during the priming processes and slowly translocated into the seed endosperm. Result of iron accumulation study further demonstrates that the iron contents of both diploid and triploid watermelon seeds did not change significantly after iron nanoparticle priming at all studied concentrations. These findings collectively indicate that seed priming associated iron nanoparticles uptake did not lead to saturate of iron in watermelon seeds. After characterized nanoparticles, it was used as a seed priming according to different concentrations, such as 20, 40, 80, and 160 ppm, as well as unprimed and hydroprimed treatment as controlled groups. Sampling was conducted at 3rd and 8th day after sowing, as shown in this picture. The hydro priming and iron nanoparticle priming treatment significantly improved the germination in both diploid and triploid watermelon varieties compared to unprimed group. This result may indicate that iron nanoparticles had no toxic impact on seed germination and seedling development. After germination testing, the targeted phytohormones were analyzed, including ABA, OPDA, gibberellic acid, salicylic acid, jasmonic acid and giatkin from 3rd and 8th day seedlings. In diploid seedling, OPDA level decreased with increasing concentration of iron nanoparticles priming treatments. A significant drop in OPDA level was observed at 80 and 160 ppm iron priming uh, iron nanopri nanoparticle priming treatment. On the other hand, OPDA level was significantly reduced at lower, such as 20 ppm, as well as higher 160 ppm iron nanoparticle priming treatment in triploid watermelon seeds. OPDA found to accumulate under salt stress condition and also help to promote seed dormancy. In view of this, lowering of OPDA accumulation with iron nanoparticles priming could be an effective strategy to break dormancy and improve plant development. However, plants producing higher OPDA level also showed enhanced drought tolerance and reduced stomatal aperture. This fact underscores the importance of the selection of the optimal iron nanoparticle concentrations
for primary treatment to get the desired traits in plants. Notably, the observed OPDA signature in third day germinated seed remained consistently up to eight days. This may indicate that iron nanoparticle may genetically alter the biosynthesis of OPDA. Significant increase in jasmonic acid level was observed in the diploid watermelon seedling at 160 ppm iron nanoparticle priming treatment. The observed findings can be linked to its formation from OPD. Taken together, other, our results may indicate that maintaining the interplay of jasmonic acid and OPDA may be crucial to get the desired combination of good seed germination strong plant growth, and robust defense response. These findings were published in ACS Sustainable Chemistry and Engineering in 2019. In summary, iron nanoparticle priming remarkably modulate of germination plant growth, and defense response-linked hormones in watermelon plants. Seed priming with nanoparticle can modulate the early stage of growth and development of watermelon seedlings. The selection of genotype and optimal concentration for priming treatment may be crucial to get the desired traits in plants. So today I was talking about seed priming with green synthesized iron nanoparticles using onion waste. For further study, I would like to see how different types of byproducts such as root and peels from fruits and vegetables can improve the efficacy of nanopriming treatment in terms of enhanced crop productivity and crop quality. Thank you for your attention and I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.